Florence, 1496. A man with restless eyes observes corpses in the dim light of a forbidden room. His hands, stained with ink and dried blood, sketch something the church would burn without hesitation. He is not merely mapping muscles and bones. Leonardo da Vinci is tracing something invisible, something that flows between the organs like underground rivers of light. In his private notes, written in reverse, he mentions a vital force that connects the heart to the brain, the eyes to the hands, man to the cosmos. These letters were never meant for public eyes. For 500 years, they remained hidden in private libraries, guarded by collectors who understood the danger of revealing such knowledge prematurely. What Leonardo discovered in those solitary nights, dissecting bodies by flickering candlelight, was not just anatomy, it was the mapping of an energetic architecture that both hermetic masters and Chinese medicine had known for millennia. But that official science would take centuries to even recognize as a possibility. He drew the human body as a divine machine, a generator of invisible magnetic fields capable of altering matter around it, and most disturbing of all, he tested it on himself. Today, as quantum physics finally begins to reach truths whispered by alchemists in medieval basements, these letters emerge as testimony to a knowledge that was never lost, only concealed. What you are about to discover is not theory, it is an operational manual of the human energy body, written by someone who dared to personally verify every claim before recording it. Leonardo was not just a painter who occasionally took an interest in science. He was an obsessive investigator, a man who saw the universe as a ciphered text waiting to be decoded. When he began his illegal dissections, he was not merely trying to understand how the body functioned mechanically. There was a greater question burning in his mind, the same question that haunted all great initiates. What is the nature of the force that animates dead flesh? In letters addressed to Francesco Melzi, his closest student and heir to his manuscripts, Leonardo describes experiments that official history prefers to ignore. He was not only mapping arteries and muscles, he was tracking what he called spiritus vitae, the spirit of life, a subtle substance he believed circulated through the body via specific channels. Does that description not sound familiar? The Chinese had spoken of meridians 3,000 years earlier. The Indians had described the Nadis with surgical precision. What Leonardo did was attempt to prove empirically, with his own hands, what mystics described in metaphors. In one particularly revealing letter, dated 1508 and kept in private Vatican archives until the 19th century, Leonardo writes about experiments with magnets applied to specific points of the body. He observed that certain metals, when brought close to particular regions of the torso and head, produced distinct sensations. It was not imagination, it was reproducible. He documented that a magnetized iron bar, when placed near the center of the chest, caused palpitations. When moved to the area between the eyebrows, it produced a peculiar mental clarity, followed by slight dizziness. What Leonardo was discovering, without the modern vocabulary to describe it, was the interaction between external magnetic fields and the bioelectric fields of the human body. Today we know that the heart generates the most powerful electromagnetic field in the body, a thousand times stronger than that of the brain, detectable up to three meters away. The HeartMath Institute, in research conducted since the 1990s, demonstrated that this field varies according to emotional states and can influence the brain rhythms of nearby individuals. Leonardo had already intuited this five centuries earlier, without sensitive instruments, guided only by meticulous observation and the courage to experiment on himself. His letters reveal something even more intriguing. Leonardo was not merely studying how energy naturally flows through the body, he was investigating how to control that flow. In correspondence with Arab physicians practicing in Milan, he discusses breathing techniques combined with hand positioning that, according to his reports, dramatically altered his state of consciousness. He described entering states in which his perceptions expanded, where complex mathematical problems resolved themselves spontaneously where visions of future inventions appeared fully formed in his mind. What he was describing without knowing it was the deliberate manipulation of the autonomic nervous system through practices that yogis had mastered for centuries. But Leonardo, being Leonardo, wanted to understand the mechanism. He theorized that there were gates in the body, places where vital force could be intensified or diminished through pressure, heat, or magnetic influence. His notes mention seven main regions along the spinal column, each associated with different mental and emotional capacities. It is impossible not to recognize here the description of the chakras, the energy centers mapped by the tantric tradition. But Leonardo arrived at this knowledge not through mystical texts, 
but through direct observation and systematic experimentation, he applied pressure to different points on the spine of freshly deceased bodies, observing how various organs responded with residual contractions. He induced altered states in himself through fasting, controlled breathing, and focused meditation, then sketched furiously what he saw internally, attempting to capture in images the geography of the invisible world that revealed itself. The question that haunted Leonardo was fundamentally practical. If the human body is a generator of energy, and if that energy can be perceived and directed, then man would not be merely a creature passively responding to his environment. He would be an active co-creator of reality. This idea was far too dangerous to be expressed openly in an era where the church determined the limits of acceptable thought. But in his his private letters, Leonardo wrote with disturbing clarity that whoever understands and masters the vital currents of his own body acquires power over the forces that shape the external world. This was not vague mysticism, it was an operational hypothesis that Leonardo tested repeatedly. He documented that in states of deep concentration, when he managed to stabilize what he called the internal movement, his ability to visualize complex structures increased exponentially. His most revolutionary inventions did not come from laborious calculations, but from moments of sudden insight when something within him aligned perfectly and knowledge simply appeared complete and functional. Da Vinci possessed a peculiar obsession with proportions, not only the visible proportions of architecture and the human form, but the invisible proportions he believed governed all natural phenomena. In rarely cited letters addressed to Luca Pacioli, the mathematician who wrote on the golden ratio, Leonardo discusses something far beyond conventional geometry. He speaks of living numbers, proportions that not only describe static forms but that pulse through dynamic processes, including the vital processes of the human body. But there were deeper layers to this understanding. Leonardo noticed that certain geometric proportions appeared repeatedly both in the structure of the body and in natural phenomena. The golden spiral he observed in nautilus shells also appeared in the growth pattern of hair at the crown of the head. The same mathematical ratio that governed the distribution of seeds in a sunflower also determined the proportions between different segments of the fingers. That was not coincidence to him. It was evidence of a universal organizing intelligence expressed through specific geometric patterns. In his more technical correspondence, Leonardo describes experiments in which he attempted to visualize how energy would move through different geometric shapes. He built three-dimensional models of platonic solids and studied them under varying light conditions, trying to understand how form affects flow. He poured colored liquids into containers of different shapes, observing how the movement patterns changed. He was searching for the fundamental principles of how form influences energy and how this would apply to the human body. What Leonardo intuited, and what modern science is only beginning to confirm, is that biological structure is not arbitrary. The shape of the heart is not merely an efficient mechanical pump, but a specific geometry that generates a toroidal field, a form mystics represented as the aura or auric egg surrounding the body. The spiral form of DNA discovered only in 1953 is the same geometry Leonardo observed in countless natural phenomena and suspected to be fundamental to life. But Leonardo went beyond passive observation. He theorized that if form influences energy, then consciously altering the posture and shape of the body should alter the energetic flow. In correspondence with architects from Milan, Leonardo discusses how buildings should be designed not only for structural functionality but for energetic effects. He argued that certain room proportions created sensations of peace, while others induced anxiety. The height of the ceiling in relation to the size of the floor, the ratio between windows and walls, the geometry of the vaults, all of it influenced how people felt when occupying those spaces. He was applying his understanding of the human energy body to environmental design, creating spaces that resonated harmonically with the natural geometry of the human field. When he spoke of how form affects energy, he was reporting results from practical experiments. This empirical approach applied to domains that usually remained in the realm of mystical speculation is what made Leonardo so dangerous to the orthodoxies of his time. He was proving through method and careful observation that there existed a science of the invisible just as rigorous as the science of the visible. He was demonstrating that energetic and spiritual phenomena were not matters of faith, but of verifiable knowledge. And he was documenting that the human being, far from being a passive observer of reality, was an active participant whose very structure and consciousness affected the surrounding world in measurable ways. Among all of Leonardo's discoveries recorded in his secret letters, none was more radical than his theory of human will as a literal magnetic force. For Leonardo, will was not an abstract concept or a vague psychological capacity. It was a real force, measurable in its effects, capable of organizing energy and matter at a distance. He did not arrive at this conclusion through speculative philosophy, but through meticulous observation of phenomena that others would 
dismiss as coincidence or imagination. In a series of letters written during his time in Rome, Leonardo describes experiments he conducted with sick individuals. He observed that certain folk healers were able to relieve symptoms simply by placing their hands over the afflicted, without administering any substance or performing any medical procedure. As a skeptical investigator, Leonardo initially suspected fraud or placebo effect, but he noticed something that intrigued him. The most effective healers shared common traits. They did not merely touch the patients, they entered a state of deep concentration before and during during the treatment, their bodies assumed a specific posture and their breathing became slow and rhythmic. He decided to experiment. He practiced entering the same states of consciousness he had observed in the healers using their breathing and concentration techniques. Then he tested whether he could produce similar effects. The results, meticulously recorded in his private notebooks, were surprising even to him. When he held his hands near wounds or areas of pain in other people while maintaining intense mental focus, individuals reported sensations of heat, tingling, and often relief of symptoms. What Leonardo was discovering is what we now know as the effect of the bioelectromagnetic fields generated by the human body. Modern research, particularly the works of James Oshman on energy medicine, has demonstrated that human hands emit measurable electromagnetic signals that vary dramatically with the mental state of the individual. Experienced practitioners of hands-on healing generate significantly stronger and more coherent fields than untrained individuals. But da Vinci went further. He theorized that if mental concentration could intensify and direct the energy emitted by the hands, then focused will should be capable of affecting reality in other ways. He began conducting even more radical experiments. In letters to a close circle of friends who shared an interest in natural philosophy, he described sessions where he practiced maintaining a specific intention in mind while observing the behavior of objects suspended by fine threads in environments isolated from air currents. The results were inconsistent, he admits honestly, but occasionally he observed movements he could not explain by obvious physical causes. Pendulums began oscillating in sync with his breath. Candle flames displayed peculiar patterns when he maintained intense concentration. These were subtle effects at the threshold of detection, but real enough to convince him that something beyond chance was taking place. What Leonardo was exploring was the interface between consciousness and matter, the same territory that quantum physics would begin to map only in the 20th century. But Leonardo Leonardo's deepest discovery about the magnetism of will came from observations about himself. He noticed that when he held a clear and sustained intention toward a specific objective, without anxiety or doubt, circumstances seemed to conspire in favor of its fulfillment. The right people appeared at the right moment. Necessary information arrived through unexpected channels. Obstacles dissolved in improbable ways. At first, he suspected that he was merely paying more attention and recognizing opportunities that had always been there. But the more he observed the pattern, the more convinced he became that something else was operating. He formulated a bold hypothesis. Human will, when sufficiently focused and aligned with specific bodily states, emitted a kind of signal that organized probabilities around it. It was not direct control over matter, but a subtle influence over the field of possibilities. In one particularly revealing letter to Melzi, Leonardo writes about what he calls the secret of great achievers. He observed that men and women who accomplished extraordinary feats, regardless of their field of work, shared a common trait, an ability to maintain a clear vision of their goals while remaining emotionally detached from the outcome. It was not desperate desire that produced results, but calm and persistent intention combined with directed action. Leonardo theorized that desperate desire, charged with fear and anxiety, created a chaotic energetic field that interfered with the natural manifestation of intentions. Will that was serene, free from emotional attachment, yet sustained by consistent action, on the other hand, created a coherent field that facilitated the materialization of objectives. He was describing, in his own language, what the Hermetic Masters taught about the law of correspondence. He understood that the internal state directly influences the external state, as as within so without. What makes Leonardo's observations especially valuable is that he was not theorizing from the comfort of a philosophical armchair. He was actively applying these principles in his own life, securing sponsorships from powerful figures, accomplishing complex projects, navigating the dangerous political waters of Renaissance Italy. His letters are, in part, a practical manual on how to use the understanding of human magnetism to move effectively in the real world. He advises Melsi on how to approach potential patrons, enter a state of centered calm before meetings, clearly visualize the desired outcome without attachment to it, speak with serene conviction rather than anxious pleading. Leonardo had realized that a person's energetic state affected how others responded to them. We are constantly transmitting and receiving electromagnetic signals that affect one another below the threshold of ordinary awareness. Leonardo had perceived 
achieved this through careful observation of human behavior and experimentation with his own internal states. Leonardo understood that these states cannot be faked. The energetic field reflects the inner reality with relentless precision. It is a mirror. Therefore, the only way to project a powerful and attractive field is to genuinely cultivate the corresponding inner qualities. To teach these techniques to unprepared individuals is like giving weapons to children. Knowledge about how to manipulate energy and consciousness can be used for healing or destruction, for liberation or control. Leonardo knew this, which is why he emphasized the necessity of inner transformation. What he essentially documented was an experimental science of consciousness. He demonstrated that phenomena considered mystical or supernatural could be investigated with the same rigor applied to the study of anatomy or mechanics. However, what makes Leonardo's legacy truly revolutionary is not just his specific discoveries, but his methodological approach. He did not accept truths based on authority. He was not satisfied with vague, mystical explanations. He insisted on personal verification, repeated experimentation, and careful documentation. He applied the emerging scientific method of the Renaissance to domains that traditionally belonged to religion and mysticism. In doing so, he created a bridge between two worlds that Western civilization had artificially separated, the world of matter and the world of spirit. That bridge is more relevant now than ever. We live in an era where official science is finally recognizing phenomena that mystics have always known. Psychoneuroimmunology proves that mental states influence biological systems. The strictly materialist worldview that dominated recent centuries is being forced to expand, to acknowledge dimensions of reality that were denied or ridiculed. Leonardo anticipated this reconciliation. He showed that it is not necessary to choose between science and spirituality, between mind and matter, between reason and intuition. Anyone willing to experiment can verify Leonardo's observations for themselves. The human body has not fundamentally changed in 500 years. The principles he discovered are still in operation. The energetic geometry he mapped still structures our experience. What Leonardo was empirically verifying was the same knowledge encoded in ancient texts, the seven hermetic laws that structure reality, mentalism, which states that all is mind, correspondence between macrocosm and microcosm, vibration that permeates all existence, polarity that enables transformation, rhythm that governs all cycles, cause and effect that weaves destiny, and gender that produces all creation. Leonardo was giving experimental body to these abstract principles. If you understand the importance of knowing the principles Leonardo da Vinci investigated, there is material that organizes this knowledge clearly and completely. The book The Master Key is divided into three parts. The first explains in obsessive detail the seven hermetic laws that govern reality, showing how these laws operate at every level of existence. The second part teaches energy control practices so you can learn to focus your attention, create coherent fields of intention and turn goals into concrete results. It is like the complete and organized version of what Leonardo explored in fragments. The third part of the book covers vast territories of spirituality that Leonardo only touched upon in his secret letters. It explores the nature of consciousness, the mechanisms of collective mind control currently acting against humanity. Da Vinci spent his entire life trying to decode the fundamental principles through observation and experiment. The master key delivers those principles already decoded, systematized, with techniques tested and refined for energetic control and conscious manifestation. The choice is yours. Spend years rediscovering what has already been discovered or equip yourself with complete knowledge and dedicate your energy to applying it immediately to create real results. May this wisdom illuminate your path. Thank you for watching.